And welcome back to Wind Waker. We're in the second dungeon. That's the dungeon. It's not really a dungeon, it's just a big tree. Yeah, can woods really be a dungeon? I mean, you can just go wherever. Hmm. Anyway, green choo-choos. They're exactly like red choo-choos, only they take an extra whole hit. Whoa. And because spin slashing deals double damage, spin slashing is really good against multiple ones trying to surround you. Also, they drop green jelly. And if you collect 15 green jelly, you can bring it to the potion dude and he will make you start making you green potions, which completely refill your magic. You can also make a sweet juice out of it. Yeah. It's, it's basically ecto cooler is what I'm getting at. Very nice. These guys respawn infinitely in this room, right? No, they don't. There's just a bunch of them. And another thing that I really didn't mention with the red chews, um, red chews drop mostly health stuff or rupees, and green chews will actually mostly drop magic stuff or rupees. They're choo chews, not chews. Oh, I'm sorry. Chews are a different enemy. I guess they are. They don't choose to be choo chews. Hmm. <laughs> mm. But yeah, you get the map in the very first room of the dungeon. That's different. That's good, I like that. I wish more dungeons would actually do that. Yeah. Anyway, that flower on the on the door is keeping us from going, but if we get too close to it, it gets really shy and closes, so you have to throw a nut at it. That's not a good way to get someone to open up emotionally. I know. If more dungeons had, like, the compass and the map in, like, the first room, it would, like, get rid of that thing where you see a chest, you're like, oh boy, what's... Oh, it's the compass. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, this room down here has some goodies in it, and sometimes... I don't think it happens in this room, but sometimes when you kill Deku Babas, they leave behind a bud that you can jump in. And also, ripping straight off from Okami, there's leaf piles that you can blow away with wind, and there's goodies underneath. This game came out before Okami. I, I was just gonna say, this came before Okami. <laughs> I, th I thought Okami came out first for some reason. No, because Okami came out, like, really late, or pretty late in the PS2's lifespan. Okami was like, what, 2007-ish, hmm. maybe? Was it after the PS3? I don't know, I feel like it was, like, 2007 or something like that. Maybe. It was definitely after this game came out, which was like 2004. Yeah. Okay. Well, that flower is constantly growing vines and keeping us from opening the chest, and because it's also shy, it, I... Luckily, you can just do this. They're shy, a.k.a. burning up. And we still don't know what these night crests are for, but... Just keep in mind, they're important and you need, like, ten of them. They're for the wrestling tournament. Okay. They're for Link's new outfit. <laughs> <laughs> He's getting into Kingdom Hearts. Road Warrior Link. Oh, wait, no. Kingdom Hearts is zips, not belts, Zips right? and belts. It's okay, both. okay. Uh, ah. I ran into a spike thing. It's kind of rude that they just put that right yeah. up there where you're not expecting it. Just out of view of the camera. So I, th I actually find it kind of weird that they put the forest dungeon after the fire dungeon, because usually it's the other way around, and I think... I think this dungeon's actually a little bit easier than the first dungeon, in my opinion, but that's probably because you get more health and more options to work around it and everything. I think it's a lot more confusing, though, so... Yeah, I was gonna say, I, I had a lot of trouble, like, first time playing this, because I was like, where, where am I supposed to go? Yeah. What's next? <laughs> Mm. I don't know, remember if I ever had that problem with the first time I played it. I even had trouble last time I played it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I never, I've never really had trouble, but then again, I tend to also... Just whenever I get even the slightest bit frustrated, I just go like, Okay, time to bring up game facts. No. Oh. Like, it, it never fails. It is weird how they put the forest... Dungeon after the fire dungeon, though, that is weird. No, okay, well, you gotta do it the other way, dummy. Oh. Oh, man. Anyway, you can also... If you wanted to, you can try and hit that one over there, or you could just do it like this. 
every when I was a kid, I would always try to aim for the little propeller things because I thought that's how you're supposed to do it. I never knew you could just fan from the other from the way that you want to go. Yeah, like the opposite way. That's actually how I thought you were supposed to do it as well. Yeah, same here. Yeah. Yeah, maybe it was how you were supposed to do it and they just fixed it for the HD version? I don't know. Maybe. Dig out my GameCube copy of Wind Waker and test it. <laughs> I don't even know if I own a Win GameCube copy anymore. I think I still have it. Hey, is this the first episode we've done since uh, Zelda You got delayed to 2016? Yes, I it think is. so, yeah. Fucking pour one out. Yeah. I was actually editing the commentary for episode 8 earlier today, and we were talking about Zelda U, and I'm like, oh, <laughs> that makes me sad now. Oh. Uh, it'll come out. You know it'll come out. It's just delayed until they feel like it's ready not to be delayed anymore. Yeah, I'm just sad because now there's, like, no actual games coming out in, like, the last half of this year. Yeah. Except for, except for Halo. Yeah. We just have to play Splatoon and Mario Kart on repeat. Yeah. I don't care. They both look like great games. Yep. We yep. should stream those, like, fucking all the time. Mario Kart 8 does look like a good game. I can't wait until it yeah, comes out. Yeah, I can't out. wait until that comes <laughs> out, man. <laughs> yeah. I was talking mostly about Splatoon, but... Yeah. Also, that 200cc shit looks insane. Oh, that man, does I can't look wait. so good. Did you see the part where he jumps off, where they jump off the ramp at the end of, like, Dolphin Shoals, and then he <laughs> yeah. glides all the way to the finish line? No that way. Was, yeah, it's nuts. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Does that skip that fucking bullshit I was turn? Of nuts. It does. Oh, nice. wow. This, this nut is completely protected by giant thorns, so we can't get it, but gotta think outside the box. Please don't talk to me about nuts. <laughs> You knew what you were getting into when you did this LP. I know. And that was an actual good game. Don't you fucking start, piece of shit. <laughs> All games are good in my opinion. Here's something that uh, most Zelda games don't do is that they actually incorporate dungeon items from the previous dungeon. That you have to use them. It's like, wow, whatever happened to that? Well, well, Skyward Sword does that too. I guess Twilight Princess doesn't really, but no. And now there's Link Between Worlds, but Link Between Worlds is kind of a weird case. Yeah. Link Between Worlds is still really good, though, and I enjoyed it. Yeah, Link Between Worlds is good. I know you didn't, Jordan, but... I enjoyed it, just not as much as most people did. Oh, okay. Yeah. Fair enough. I can see why some people would not enjoy it as much as other people, but I still really liked it. I think it's my favorite 2D Zelda. Also, these guys... Whoa. They're adorable, but they uh... slow you down. Uh, I'm just collecting as many as I can. And then I'm like, what would happen if I opened up the chest? And then, uh... <laughs> but yeah, you just spin slash to get them off of you. Or if there's only one, one or two, you can also roll, I think. But if you get too many on you, they get... You become super heavy and you move slow and you can't jump. Which is bad for this part because you need to jump. I wonder if someone would, like, hack these guys to appear later on in the game if having enough of them on you could replace the iron boots. Hmm. Hmm. Oh, is that, is that a spoiler? I'm sorry. Nah, it's alright. Yeah. I would say probably not. No. I think they were no. probably smart enough to um, assign specific values to the iron boots that aren't assigned to their things. But then again, I could be wrong. Maybe. It would be interesting to see a Kaizo Wind Waker. <laughs> yeah, I was thinking <laughs> of that. I would probably actually play Kaizo Wind Waker if it ever came that, out. Wait, that's, that can't happen. There's no bullet bills in Zelda. What are you talking about? <laughs> There's no chain chomps. There's no chain chomps. There is in 
at Link's Awakening. There is. We got but, Kaizo I mean, Link's none Awakening, in... but nothing else. Yeah. Just wouldn't be proper. <laughs> Anyway, this is a maze of these thorny things, and if you go too fast, you'll run straight into them. But as long as you know where they are, there's no real indication where they pop up, so you just kind of have to wander around. Yeah, I always thought it was weird that uh, the the like thorn the thorny vines or whatever you want to call them don't get hurt by the bombs. Yeah. Yeah. It makes sense in the game sense, but not in a, a real-world sense, I guess. Yeah. Anyway, luckily they give you a way to get back without having to go through all that bullshit again. Oh god, so in my practice run, these guys managed to somehow get me back down into the pit filled with the little, like eyeball guys wow. and then I could not I could not deal with it oh, I almost no. died I just made sure not to do that I gotta get all the pretty sure every time I played this I run past all the choo choos <laughs> every <laughs> time well I want their sweet jelly so that way I can get potions made mm. I want to show off that what that sweet animation the potion guy does when he makes potions yeah I never realized this before, but is this like the only Zelda, 3D Zelda, where enemies respawn if you're only one room away from them? I think so. Also, I'm getting confused about my button layouts again. And this guy, he's very elusive. Get out of here. Nobody likes you. You could even say that we hat you. No, no, we really couldn't. Oh. Okay. Just, Sorry, just I, so didn't, you know. I didn't mean to make you so peeved. Anyway. Ah, uh, uh, is that no. the is that the hot new game coming out for the Wii U? We have. There's a moth dude, and oh well, <laughs> I I killed the moth dude too fast to show off what he does. Unfortunately. Oh, I always really like the look of that enemy. Yeah, he's cool. Uh, we'll be seeing him later on in this episode, so I'll be able to talk about him more then. But today, right now. I accidentally killed him too fast. I did not know the counter automatically killed them. Because usually they take a couple hits. Yeah, they don't look like they would either. Like, they look pretty strong. There's a lot of P-hats up top, and I really want the feathers because you get... You need 20 of them to get a prize. But then I accidentally blew them all the way down... The oh... Oh. Well, oh. uh, I really, really want those feathers, and then I just completely forget about the feathers anyway. I just killed them all because I lost track about which ones gave me feathers, which ones didn't. <laughs> I think you can see it, because, like, the ones that you already got them from, like, the feathers look slightly more... Like, they look a little ruffled. I'm not sure mm. about that, though. I don't know. It's easy to tell if you've gotten the skulls, skull necklaces off the moblins. Yeah. Because... Their model actually changes when you get the skull necklaces off of them, and that's nice. But I think they're the only monsters that the models actually change. I always kind of liked how the doors of this dungeon have got the, um, like the symbol from the Kokiri sword on them from uh, Ocarina of Time. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, and here's something that they don't really ever make oh. you do, except in, like, the last dungeon. You can climb on top of the grapple things. Oh, yeah. I don't think they... I've ever been up here. <laughs> <laughs> they don't explain that to you until later, either. No, they don't. Oh, wait. I think I've been up here, like, once. Yeah. I forget what's actually in this chest, but... I mean, I need it. Probably rupees. Oh. Joy pendant. I needed it. I can't have treasure chests on my map uh, it's just against my nature as a Zelda player can't do that do you think the Kokiri shields were made out of these doors? maybe huh oh shit Ah. oh god it's Mothra oh yeah so jet powered moth guy um, he also has a feather and every time you hit him, he loses a wing. But he'll do that, but you can counter it, and he'll also lose a wing then. 
and then once you get rid of all his wings, he just becomes a tougher version of those moth things. And every time you hit him, they spew those eyeball guys. Oops, I little neon eyeball mans. That was super gross. Yeah. How could you do that? The bright lighting in this game make all these enemies look so weird. They look like party lights. <laughs> Man, now you know now you know where those things come from and they've been all over you. That is oh. gross. Oh god. Ah. Uh. Anyway, dungeon item. We got nice. the boomerang. I love the boomerang in this game. The boomerang is so good in this game. So the boomerang can actually target up to five things at once, and because now uh the Wii U gamepad has two control sticks. You can aim and move at the same time, and it's super great. That is the best. Can mm -hmm. confirm. After years of wrestling with the controls in the GameCube version, that was great. <laughs> <laughs> and also, the uh, the boomerang can take care of these guys super easy. You don't need to do what I just did right there. You just hit him twice with the boomerang. Or hit him once and then hit him with your sword. Either way, the boomerang's much more efficient at taking care of these guys than the uh, the sh leaf is. You just fucking scalp him. <laughs> <laughs> that is pretty rude. And, and then they just sit there for a second. No! <laughs> you have so much to live for! Uh, not without his little flying bits, he's not. Uh, they grow back. Uh, yeah, they do grow so. back. They grow back fairly quickly, actually. Anyway, the the boomerang kind of has a mind of its own if you like go up if you target things that are way different directions because it goes after the targets in order that you put them in. So if you have one target to the way to the left and then one way to the right and then another one way to the left, it just doesn't really know what to do. <laughs> yeah. But I think like it can go through walls and stuff, right? Uh, I think so. Or at least, like, not through the walls of the room, but it can go through obstacles. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Is Wind Waker the only game where the boomerang does the target thing, or...? Um... As far as I know, I... Yes. There might have been one from a Zelda game that I didn't play. And they also did that in the well-known and well-regarded Zelda spin-off, Darksiders 1. <laughs> <laughs> I still need to play that game. I bought it for $5 on PlayStation Network, and then I played, like, the first 20 minutes, and I'm like, oh, yeah, that's right, this is why I didn't bother finishing this game. Wait, why is that? Uh, it, I don't know, controlled weird. Like, I thought it was just way too heavy action for a Zelda-type game. Yeah, it's like a combination between a Zelda game and, like, a beat-em-up. Yeah. Oh, that's kind of weird. I just... I just wasn't expecting it, so I guess that's why I kind of soured on it. But now that I know to expect that, I should really just go back and play it. It's pretty good. Oh, these gross tentacle things! Uh, I, pick, I picked up a copy, like, physical copy, super cheap, because it was on sale. And did you play it? I have not played it, no. <laughs> <laughs> these guys, they're not really dangerous, but they do drain your magic if they hold on to you. So. Oh, so that's what they do. They, those those things scared the piss out of me when I first played this game. <laughs> they are pretty scary. They also spawn infinitely. Yeah. Yeah. That doesn't help. <laughs> <laughs> it really doesn't. I always just thought they were just there to be an annoyance, but oh, I guess they drain your magic too. Yeah, they they do drain your magic. All I right. actually didn't know what they did. I I I found that out in recording. I was like, what do these things even oh, do? Okay. Oh. Okay. I mean, that's not that bad. No. Especially since magic is, like, fucking everywhere in this dungeon, because mm, yeah. there's grass everywhere. Yeah. Wait, you don't get hurt by this water? No. No. That's it's weird. It's only purple water. Huh. 